What's the word, everybody? Welcome into a new edition of the By the Horns podcast presented by Toyota. And know that Toyota has more all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles than any other brand. So make sure you find yours and shine on Toyota. Let's go places. Cam Smith with my man, Drew Stevens, to recap this stretch run by this Bulls team. And it's been a little while since we tapped in with everybody. Uh, Drew, last time we spoke to everybody was after that Bulls win last Wednesday against the Orlando Magic. Bulls have won three of their first five games, opened some eyes to certain levels, but then we got to go over their last four because they've dropped four straight in a situation where, that yeah, you can put it on Zach Levine, who has been dealing with some injuries, separated his shoulder against the Orlando Magic, gutted his way through in the game against the Brooklyn Nets, but after that game, it was revealed that he was dealing with a right abductor strain, and also we know the situation with Lonzo Ball, something that we talked with fans with, before we left left everybody with him dealing with the right wrist sprain, so kind of being reevaluated to see where he is. But we know what the NBA is. There's really kind of no excuses. The schedule makers are not going to make it easy for you, and teams are definitely not going to make it easy for you. So this Bulls team has dropped four straight after those first five games, and we've seen some some good and also some things that need to be worked on with this group going back to the Brooklyn game where you had a situation where possibly this team could have won three straight. Now, remember going back to what that streak was against the Memphis Grizzlies, against the Orlando Magic, down 20 points. I know we spoke with Billy Donovan and those situations weren't things where they want to continue on doing, but it happened again in Brooklyn, man. So (laughs) you go to the Brooklyn game, you drop that, you come back to Chicago on Monday against Utah one of the worst, if not the worst, offensive rated team in the NBA, three-point shooting-wise, field goal percentage-wise, and the Bulls allowed the Utah Jazz to put up 135 points and allow second-year guard Keontae George, the point guard, to tie career high with 33 points. So you have that loss, thinking you can try and bounce back in a tough task against the Dallas Mavericks. In Dallas, you drop that one because we know that Luka and Kyrie, once they get it going, and they definitely got it going, uh, forced the Bulls into a lot of careless turnovers and got a lot of runouts uh, for themselves. And we we push it towards to where we are tonight. Me and Drew are still at the United Center because we love the grind, <laughs> right? After the Bulls' fourth consecutive loss, and it came at the hands of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So, Drew, take it back to things that you saw from the Brooklyn game to where we are now in this loss against Minnesota. And we'll really go in depth with that with tonight's game against the uh, Timberwolves and that loss. So, yeah, man, I think it's just it's kind of a, a reoccurring theme with this team. You know, the way that they play defense and kind of getting beat off the dribble, which leads to, you know, teams being able to get into the teeth of the defense, draw the defense in, draw two. And then from there, it's just a rotation game. And a lot of times the Bulls are missing assignments. The communication isn't quite there or the rotations are late. And it's just a, a swell of just – bad things that happen for this team. And it's kind of been, like I said, a reoccurring theme for this team. And I think it's a through line to every loss that they've had, you know, especially when they're going against backcourts who have players who can create off the dribble. I think it spells disaster for them almost. And it puts them in a position where their three point shot means even more, becomes even more significant for them because they're in such of a, a hole defensively where they can be put in rotation um so much and I think that's that's essentially what we've been seeing these last four games obviously like you said they've been without Zach for three of these games now Lonzo obviously has been out with that wrist injury so they're not quite having that same kind of firepower or con- uh, connectivity on the offensive side of the ball to connect things and and keep things kind of balanced so yeah man again like just that defense is is, is going to be a recurrent theme for this team and they almost certainly have to play offense with their – I'm sorry, defense with their offense by means yeah. of that pace that they play with, the amount of threes that they um, shoot every game. is keeping them in games and and putting them back in, in some of the other games that we saw where they got down by 20 points. Yeah, and to your point of, like, guards that can create off the dribble, and this is the NBA, so we know there are multiple guys that can do that. So going back to the Brooklyn game, Cam Thomas, you know he has one of the ultimate green lights – in the NBA. I don't know what kind of deal that he cut with the Brooklyn Nets, but look, they really believe in him that he has full autonomy to shoot the ball whenever, wherever, but it's a guy that really can get himself going. Then you fast forward to what we saw Monday right in the United Center 
with Keontae George and really him from start and honestly to finish, Drew, the first points of the game against the Utah Jazz were a Keontae George three from the top of the key. And he just really never stopped from that point on. And we know that Keontae George is one of those guys that coming out of Baylor, he was always talented, a guy that can score. And that's just his MO. That's just who he is. But for a Bulls team in a situation that needed a win, and keep in mind, before that game, they, they, they lost to the Brooklyn Nets, but still they had won two of the last three. So you would think against a Utah team that was winless coming into that ball game, 0-6, the only winless team in the NBA, that you don't want to come out lackadaisical. And it felt like too many times that the Bulls were playing with their food against the Utah Jazz. And when you have a young team that's, one, hungry for a win, but then also two on the road and playing that villain role and get themselves going early, then you're going to have a long night. And so the Bulls yeah. dug themselves into a situation where they really could never climb out because Utah stayed in control of that ball game. And they were just efficient, moving the basketball and keeping that defense uh, rotation less when it comes to that end of the floor. And it resulted in Utah just getting kind of anything and everything that they wanted. So when you look at the Dallas Mavericks game, Drew, there was always a saying, you know, we've had coaches in high school – I even had a coach at Southern Illinois where you have just a bad game. You, you just know it's bad. You don't want to watch the film. And the coach is like, burn the game film because we don't even want to see it. And that felt like the situation against the Dallas Mavericks from, again, from start to finish, you have a team controlling the ball game. And when you're the Bulls, you cannot allow that to happen, especially when you're missing one of your top guns, if not your top gun mm -hmm. offensively in Zach Levine. Yeah, and, and Billy talked about post game how he was disappointed in – the lack of execution, the disconnect between what he told the team and shoot around in terms of the Mavericks being one of those teams that are going to gamble. They're going to swipe down at the ball. They're always looking to try to create turnovers. And the Bulls just coughed it up. A lot of carelessness that we saw um, Monday night. And it's just, again, man, this team can't afford to play that style of basketball where they turn the ball over and – they're just allowing teams to run out on them. And that also is preventing them from getting out on their own break and right. using that pace to um, to attack teams in, in transition. So this is this is what it is, Cam. I, I, right. you know, George stepped up. You know, they did not have Laurie Markkinen. They did not have Jordan Clarkson. So somebody had to kind of take the lead for the Jazz team. And those guys have pride, too. Again, they were the last winless team, and they were looking to – to get a win, Will Hardy is really coaching those guys up yeah. to the best of his ability. Obviously, they don't have the roster that some of the other teams in that Western Conference do, but um, they are a team with pride, and they came in United Center, and they got that dub. Yeah, for sure, man. And we cannot forget John Collins and what he was able to do off the bench yeah. for Utah, knowing I'm sure that John Collins is a guy that we saw start for the Atlanta Hawks for a long time. He made the, was dealt to the Utah Jazz before last season and still trying to find his way in Utah, but 28 – and 13 off the bench, like those situations can't happen for this Bulls team. And we'll get into that bench conversation when we go and fast forward to the Minnesota Timberwolves and that matchup and that game that we had Thursday night inside the United Center. But again, to your point, it's one of those things for this Bulls team that they cannot turn the basketball over at the high rate that they're doing it. Now, you're not going to play mistake-free basketball. That that ain't happening. I don't care who you are, what level you're playing on, unless you're playing like fifth grade bitty basketball or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> But when you have a league like the NBA, and especially at the pace of play that the Bulls are playing at, still number one in the league, you're going to have situations where you miscommunicate and you're going to miss a pass or you just have just timing issues, right? And this is a team that's not used to playing at this pace. They've done a solid job in their wins of pushing pace and scoring in transition, but you have to be able to take care of the basketball. And if you watch these games and if you cover the team like you and I have since we're on the beat and making sure that we are – staying informed and informing our viewers and our fans is that when you turn the basketball over 20 plus times, it's a recipe for success. And even going back to the situation against the Dallas Mavericks, and that's the game film that we want to burn, right? But you look at the turnovers for the Chicago Bulls, 23 turnovers in that game against the Dallas Mavericks, Drew, and also the Mavs were able to score 28 points off those 23 turnovers. So it's a situation where a team that was in the NBA Finals last year in my opinion, they got better from the moves in the offseason of what they added, especially when you think of the rejuvenated Clay Thompson. I'm still getting used to seeing him in that shade of blue and Same. also Clay with the, with the headband over his ears. Like it's, it, it gives me <laughs> Derek Fisher vibes. 
And that's not a good thing because it just looks awkward. But Clay don't <laughs> care what he looks like on the court as long as he's making threes. And he was doing that against the Bulls. But you have those situations where when you help a team just get into a groove, I think that's the easier part of basketball. If you play against a team that's just going to turn the ball over, you can have runouts and have layups. And if you're not making shots, it just allows you to feel even more comfortable off on the offensive end when you can get dunks, you can get lobs. And now you can really get into your rhythm of what your sets are. Yeah, it really just seemed like the Mavericks and especially Luka Doncic were just kind of playing, toying with the Bulls. You know, they did not have Derek Lively the second. They were playing without P.J. Washington. So you thought that, you know, maybe the Bulls could take advantage of some of those absences on the other side. But again, man, just trying to play at that pace. Obviously, there's going to be some turnovers that occur, but when you're just kind of haphazardly throwing the ball around the court and not yeah. – being sure-handed with your passes and not making sure the execution is, is where it needs to be. It just yeah. feeds right into the other team. Uh, we'll talk about, obviously, this, this game against Minnesota, but Billy did tell us that counting tonight's game against Minnesota, there's been seven of nine games now, seven opponents that the Bulls have played that have shot more field goals than the Bulls have. And that's yeah. largely because of second chance points that are given up, and obviously because of the turnovers that are happening. So, you know, the Bulls got to take care of the ball. That's a prerequisite for them to play the way the way they want to play and to be able to get some wins. Yeah, yeah. And it's a checklist that I'm sure that Billy goes through with the players before every game saying, hey, guys, we cannot turn the ball over. We cannot allow this team to run in transition. We have to defend the three. Just everything that a coach will go through with a team to set them up for success, right? I mean, if a coach is not doing that, then they shouldn't be coaching. But we know that Billy Donovan is trying to prepare his team along with his staff to put them in a position to win a ball game. But it's easier said than done when you find yourself in those ruts like they were against the Dallas Mavericks and also what we saw tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves. So looking at this team, coming into that situation tonight against Minnesota, they had lost three straight. It's a Minnesota Timberwolves team that was right behind the Dallas Mavericks standings-wise, and they're trying to keep themselves in the top six of the West because they have some unfinished business for themselves for this season because last year we know they made it to the Western Conference Finals, lost to the Dallas Mavs, and then that's the season. All season changes for them. They trade away Carl Anthony Towns to New York. They bring in Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo. So it's a new-look Minnesota Timberwolves team that honestly is still trying to find themselves offensively, Drew, um, it, I'm still curious to see how this team continues to develop on that end. It just feels like they're more compact with how their offense flows because we know that Cat as a big is one of the best big man shooters in NBA history. Let's just call it what it is. But yeah. they were able to space that floor and allow Anthony Edwards to be Anthony Edwards. So I'll keep my eye on what that looks like for Minnesota. But getting back to this matchup against the Bulls, yeah, you think that it's Anthony Edwards. It's Minnesota, one of the elite stars of the NBA. But the Bulls had a, a trick up their sleeve. They came out and punched Minnesota right in the mouth. And that's what you wanted to, to, to see, especially on the tail end of a back-to-back, -back, as we talked about. They played the Mavs Wednesday night, but they came out right away, Drew, and got to business. And it was impressive to see, especially offensively, how they were moving the basketball. It really was. For the first time this season, they ended the first quarter with a lead. That was a breath of fresh air coming from yeah, the I'm going to clap it up for that. I'm going to clap it up for that one time. We're going to clap it up for that, you know. A little, a little sure. golf clap. Sure. A little yeah, golf yeah. clap. It was good. They scored 30-plus points in three quarters tonight. Vucevic looked great. Vuce was yeah. taking it to, <laughs> what, a four-time defensive player of the year and Rudy Gobert. Um, I, I, I don't know. A couple, of, a couple of those defensive player of the year awards look funny in the light, but I, I digress. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. They do. They do. I mean, he, he can still say they had his crib, though. So we got it. We got it. That's true. That's true. Um, but no, Vuce has just continued to play well. Um, he's in the right spots offensively. He feels like he's in a groove with this team and the way that they want to play. We talked about while we were watching the game how he's just in a perfect spot transition wise as that trail big. And against a center like Rudy Gobert, who really doesn't want to be on the perimeter, yeah. having Vooch there to pull him out of the paint, uh, to force him to challenge those threes and, and put Vooch in a position where he can either go ahead and take that three or take Gobert off the dribble, go yeah. to the rim, or kick out to one of his teammates. You know, he's he's a for sure weapon for this Bulls team. But Kobe White played well as well. He I think he hit three first quarter threes, if I'm not mistaken. But – it was a little bit of a 
uh, uneasiness, even though the Bulls were playing well. I think they led by as many as 13 points in this game. Yep. But, you know, you, you see Anthony Edwards on the other side. You see Chris Finch on the sidelines. You see this team, even though it has different pieces with Julius Randle in cat spot, you still felt like, man, this team is dangerous, and eventually they're going to start to punch back. And, of course, Anthony Edwards did that, scoring 13 of his 35 points in the fourth fourth quarter. The Bulls, the hot hand from deep, got cold. Yeah, You had some carelessness. You had some defensive possessions that they couldn't quite wrap up by getting a defensive rebound. And Vooch spoke to the fact that he thought that the, Tim- the Timberwolves started to play with more physicality and the Bulls didn't, just didn't quite match that. So, you know, in the end, they just didn't have a fourth quarter tonight. And it cost them cost them a victory, you know, against yeah. a, a Western Conference finalist. This would have been a big win for a team that wants to surprise people this season. They just they just couldn't finish. You highlighted two points that are very important. One, I'm gonna start with uh, Nikola Vucevic, and you talked about just what he was able to do against Rudy Gobert. And he was putting Rudy Gobert through hell with his shooting, and we just Vuce is just he's been that um, throughout this entire season, shooting 50, 40, 90 from the field. Those are all star numbers. Right. And he's putting up all star numbers for himself and what he's averaging double double wise. So this is only the second game out of the nine that he's played so far that he didn't reach double figures. And that's one thing that for me, I get it to a certain extent. Now, the Bulls are out rebound. I believe it was 40 to 31 or 33. So it wasn't like they were killed on the glass. But you got to think about some opportunities that you wish you could have had if you got those rebounds to either extend an offensive possession or limit Minnesota to one shot, especially in that fourth quarter, as you mentioned, Anthony Edwards, 13 points in the fourth, and his 13 was part of a 45-point fourth quarter performance by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Booth said it, like you said, post game. You knew eventually with that team and just how good that they are, they're going to make a run. Even I spoke to Anthony Edwards post game. He understood that as well, that he felt that as long as they stood, uh, stayed in striking distance, that it was a number, numbers game. They were playing by the numbers that one, they knew eventually the Bulls were going to miss shots that were contested. And Ant-Man brought this up because, you know, he's a student of the game that I believe that in the NBA, when you contest shots, that percentage goes down 10 to 15 percent on contested shots. So he was saying that eventually he knew the Bulls were going to start missing shots. And at the same time, he understands and knows who he is in this NBA. He wanted to turn it on. He said he didn't see anything coverage wise defensively that the Bulls were doing anything different. He just was more aggressive in terms of finding a shot from three. And he went five of nine from three. I was surprised they didn't get didn't get up double digit three point attempts because he's averaging 11 three point attempts. <laughs> but if you question Ant-Man about that, then I, I'll, I'll refer you to a video that we're not going to talk about <laughs> on by the horns where it's some not safe for work words that he used for people that feel a certain type of way of Ant-Man averaging 11 three point attempts. But back to Vooch and his 25 points, but it was the efficiency from Vooch once again, 11 of 15 shooting from the field, three of five from three. And it was a couple of moments where he hit back to back threes in that ball game, Drew, that really opened my eyes and what he is. And we've heard Billy talk about it this week after, I believe it was after the Jazz loss, is that they need to play through Nikola Vucevic. And I'm a big proponent of that because not only is he the most efficient player on this team, but he's the most productive player on this team. And nightly has a mismatch. Like Vuce can get the better of his defender. And you talk about Rudy Gobert being a four-time defensive player of the year, but we know that Rudy cannot defend in space. And so that's why you see him not playing those crunch time minutes in the playoffs because you got guys like Luka Doncic saying, come on out here, big man. Let me put you on this island. And not saying that Vuce is going to take Gobert off the dribble like the moves that Luka does, but still, as that trail big, catching that basketball, either knocking down that top of the key three, or even situations where Rudy Gobert overclosed out and overran his closeout, Vooch went right past him to score the basketball. So he's one of those guys that moving forward and really almost every game, you have to try and find Nikola Vucevic as that trail big or also on those high ball screens where he gets that little on big matchup and try and see if he can get an advantage in the post when he has those opportunities. Yeah, Vooch looks like not only an all-star candidate but a most improved player candidate hell maybe even an all nba candidate the way he's playing we we need to go ahead and just shout out from the sears tower we're not calling it the willis, willis tower because we're true chicagoans we need to shout that out from the sears tower drew that boots <laughs> needs to be most improved and for sure on an all-star player run because his numbers are there yeah he's been the bulls most consistent offensive player to your point i think that they would do well to continue to look for him 
look for him even more on those split actions, the DHOs, you know, him at the nail on or trailing on the on the transition opportunities. Yeah. Like he's such a smart player. He's not, you know, the 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 quickest footed athlete on the court at, at any time, but he's just he's cerebral in that he makes moves quick. He makes quick decisions with the ball. He's either going to shoot it, penetrate, or get off it and kick out to a teammate. And I think the yeah. Bulls can really use that. And it feeds right back into the style of play that they want to they want to do this year. Um, and he just – he looks great, man. He looks great. Uh, this is the guy that they traded for. Unfortunately, he was not shooting a three the, the way he is right now the past yeah. couple of seasons, two seasons and a half. But um, he's bringing it so far this season and again he's been like the most consistent offensive player that they have and you know still not big on Vucevic post-ups but if mm -hmm. he's got his guy sealed down low like we saw a couple times tonight yeah. against the Minnesota Timberwolves like you gotta feed him if you can see his numbers give him the ball right give him he the has, ball. A, has that wide base and is there for him so just some more uh, first half notes from this Bulls team and what we saw. We laid out some points for you guys, but I mean, this is the first time this season that the Bulls led, not only after the first quarter, but also the second quarter and third quarter. Shot in that first quarter, 75% from three, 63% from the floor in that first quarter. They also led at halftime 65 to 56 and assisted 20 times on their 24 made field goal. So we got back to just this team moving the basketball around. They got great production from the bench who guys like Taylor Horton Tucker came in and gave them great minutes. Dalen Terry with his effort came out and great, gave great minutes. Julian Phillips is another guy as well, along with Jalen stick Smith uh, yeah. played some, some nice minutes for this team on both ends of the floor. So again, going back to the tail end of a back to back, you would kind of expected this team a little bit to come out lethargic, like a days ago. I mean, they just got, their 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 lunch is handed to them against the Dallas Mavericks in Dallas, and now you have to come back to face off against the Minnesota Timberwolves. But the great thing is, is that Minnesota thought that this team was going to come out just slow and just unenthused and just lack of energy. It wasn't the case. They came out right away and put up some great work in those first three quarters, especially in that first half. But getting back to that bench point, Drew, thirty six points from the bench, and Taylor Horton Tucker led all bench scores for the Bulls with 13 points. And I talked to him post game and he was just saying that he saw some things defensively against Minnesota while sitting on the bench that he could really exploit. And that was going to the basket. And, you know, THT, what we've seen of him and known of him from the North side of Chicago and with his frame at six, four, 200 plus, I'm not going to throw the number out there, but he's a bowling <laughs> ball. We described him as a bowling ball, but also a dude that is so creative going downhill and getting to the rim. And that's something that he really wanted to exploit. And it was on full display tonight. It really was. You know, a lot of Bulls fans, you know, they question kind of the motives behind this season and THT getting the playing time that he is. But, I mean, he's a scorer. And Billy Donovan is going to put guys on the court who he thinks are going to help this team win, you know, to the dismay of some portion of Bulls fans who would like to see them lose enough games to, to keep that, that uh, top ten protected pick. But he, he makes yeah. plays, man. He makes plays with the ball. I, look, I, I'm going to say this, Drew. I will say this for people that believe that. Remember the Atlanta Hawks last year? Play-in team, stay competitive, obviously played against the Bulls in the play-in right here in the United Center. They still found themselves with the number one overall pick, and they selected Zachary Richeche. So for those out there like, you know, tank, lose, 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 I kind of get what you're thinking because you want to heighten your chances of getting the number one overall pick. Um, but at the same time, though, you can still stay competitive and the lottery odds could fall in your favor like it did the Atlanta Hawks. So I'm just I'm just not a big fan of the whole tank thing. And I know that the Bulls aren't going to do that. And Billy Donovan even said training camp and media day that this is going to be a competitive team. And we have seen that in some instances with this Bulls team throughout the first nine games. Yeah, they're going to be competitive on on those nights where their shot is falling and they're keeping the turnovers low for sure. It's just. How often, how well can they do that? And we've right. seen it through this first stretch of games that they've had. Granted, they haven't had their full complement of players with, you know, Zach and, and Lonzo being out. But this is the, kind of the, the the needle that this team has to thread because of the personnel that it has. You know, we would love to see myself. I would love to see Modest Bozellas get some more time, some more developmental yeah. minutes. And we have seen him get some more minutes these last two games. Right, right. Um, and 23, minutes, 23 minutes against the Dallas Mavericks. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's on career high so far. 
13 points, just missed a double-double with nine rebounds, a couple steals, a block. He, he looked pretty good uh, the other night in yeah. Dallas. He really did. I think that's the best showing that he's had so far this season. Uh, and again, he came out and got some more minutes tonight. I think he played over Julian Phillips um, for the first time this season. So that has to give him confidence. Billy is showing that he has confidence in Modest coming off of that Dallas game to put him in there um, in the first quarter tonight and kind of going through that rotation, that 10 man rotation that he's been using. So again, man, they're trying to thread this needle in the front office and on the court of the personnel that they have. And again, these guys are going to try to win games. So I think the the tanking and, and the questions that the, that the certain fans have about what direction this team is going, I think you see it. You know that they're going to be out here trying to be competitive. Billy Donovan is coaching this team. He's not going to put them in a position just to blatantly lose, right. for better or worse. So, I mean, it kind of is what it is. And again, it falls back to how well they're shooting the ball how well they're taking care of the ball and, you know, can they get timely stops? You know, and at losses, I kind of, we kind of see the formula for what's happening so far this season. It's kind of like telling your kid, like, don't touch that stove because that stove is hot. Don't touch that pot. It's hot. And of course (laughs) they touch it. (laughs) So (laughs) it's just those things. It's still early on in the season. And Josh Giddy spoke to this post game after tonight's loss to the Timberwolves is just saying that it's still early. They're still trying to clean up some things, obviously with the turnovers, but you want to make sure you take care of that sooner rather than later, or if not at all, because that recipe, and we sure, I'm sure that other NBA teams are seeing this, is that if you try and get this Bulls team into consecutive turnovers like the Minnesota Timberwolves did tonight, you can find yourself either building on your lead or cutting in within the Bulls' lead and staying in striking distance to try and make your final push in the final 12 minutes. And that was exactly the recipe for the Minnesota Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards. So those are things for this group that they know they have to take care of is the basketball. You cannot have those careless turnovers and runouts because as you mentioned earlier, Drew, in this uh, by, the, by the Horns episode, is that they have to try and use their offense for defense and, and try and see if they can get some, get some things together for themselves because if they're not making shots, it just makes it tougher, especially when you got a team uh, getting run out. So, again, the Bulls drop a game. Again, their fourth straight to the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's the second time in the last three games where they've given up exactly 135 points to an opponent. That first game was Monday against the Jazz at the United Center. Second time was tonight inside the United Center against the Minnesota Timberwolves to use a 45-point outburst in the fourth quarter to really take control of things. And Anthony Edwards, 13 points in the fourth. It's Ant-Man. He is who he is. He knows who he is. And he's definitely out for that most valuable player award in the NBA. So let's push it forward, Drew, before we wrap up this By the Horns episode. Looking at the schedule for this Bulls team, it does not get easy for this group because they have to go to Atlanta Saturday night And if you're paying attention to other NBA teams and other NBA games, the Hawks just got a massive win against the New York Knicks in Atlanta. So it's big for them. But tomorrow night, they're going to be playing in Detroit, I believe. So it's going to be the tail end of a back to back on Saturday night for the Atlanta Hawks when they return home. But this is where it gets real for this Bulls team, Drew. And it's already been real. But you're talking about after you go to Atlanta, you have the Cleveland Cavaliers. You go to New York, you have the Knicks. You face the Cavaliers again, who are still undefeated in the NBA, the number one team in the league. And after you come back from Cleveland the second time you face them, you got Ime Udoka and the Houston Rockets waiting for you inside the United Center. And we know how Ime Udoka and the Rockets get down. It's going to be a physical basketball game. They're going to try and get up and down and make it a track meet just because they have the athletes to be able to do that. So it's the NBA. It's no rest for the weary. And we talked about this time and time again. Take care of the basketball, especially against better teams. Yeah, we do. And, you know, this this Bulls team, we're going to see, continue to see what it's made of mentally, physically, emotionally. You know, you, you have two back-to-back games where there's there's been some letdowns, whether on the side of execution defensively or offensively with the turnovers. Now you go into a game against the Hawks, against Trey Young, who is notoriously – good at getting into the teeth of the defense and throwing yeah. lobs to his big men or spraying out to guys or just going ahead and shooting floaters. So that'll be something to keep an eye on how well they can contain Trey Young and those ball handlers and, and, and how that plays into 
what happens and the results on Saturday night. But, yeah, man, this, this Bulls team, there are no easy nights for them. We just yeah. saw them lose to the Utah Jazz. You know, they have to take every opponent seriously, which I think they do. Right. It's just for whatever reason, these slow starts that they've typically been getting off to have just kind of buried them. You know, we have seen them come back from 20 point deficits. But again, that's kind of having an account on hot shooting from from the perimeter to keep them in these games or to pull them back into games. So right. we got to figure out what, what the Bulls going to do with this recipe, man, and if they can find some – some ways to get some stops on the defensive side of the ball and, and stop these, these uh, shot creating guards from just making the lights out on them. Yeah. And they're definitely about to find themselves against a group of shot making guards. You talked about Trey Young for the Atlanta Hawks, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm going to throw in Karis LeVert into that group as well with Cleveland, Jalen Brunson with the Knicks. We know how he gets down against the bulls when he faces them. He definitely takes that matchup personally and you have to face the Cavaliers again. And was, as I mentioned, back at the United Center against the Houston Rockets with Fred Van Vliet, with Jalen Green. I mean, so many guys with that group that are young and just really thirsty to get after things. So we'll see how the Bulls fare up as we now, get to those games. Go ahead. Go ahead, Drew. Help might be on the way. Zach Levine, who's missed the last three games, seems to be in line to make his return Saturday night against the Hawks. So they'll have at least, in theory, some more firepower coming, which they're going to need. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And it feels like it would be a perfect game for Zach to come back to yeah. against the Atlanta Hawks, who can get after you defensively in some situations. But we know traditionally Atlanta will let you cook. So that will be a good game <laughs> for Zach to get his feet back underneath him and find himself with his team and try and stop this losing skid for this group. But reinforcements are there offensively, but it's the defensive end where they really have to tighten things up, especially yeah. against the stretch of teams that they're going to face. So that's going to do it for this edition of the By the Horns podcast presented by Toyota. And know that Toyota has more all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles than any other brand. So find yours and shine on. Toyota, let's go places. For my man, Drew Stevens, I'm Cam Smith. We will tap in with you soon. Take care, everybody.